All right, we want to welcome you to Countdown to Courage. It is October the 21st, Wednesday, October the 21st, 2020, and we're excited to have you uh, on board today. We are uh, very excited about our service tonight. Uh, we love Wednesday Wednesday because that means it's midweek service time at Calvary, and so we're thankful for that. Looking forward to a great time together in God's house tonight. Uh, that takes place at 7 o'clock. The doors will be open much sooner than that. Uh, bookstore will be open. We'll have some refreshments available. I encourage you to get, get there a little early and fellowship before the service. But the main service will start at 7 o'clock. And then we're going to be having a new members class tonight at 6 p.m. out in the fellowship hall. And so if you're one of our newer members in the church, let me encourage you to be there at 6 o'clock. I know that's a little early. But let me encourage you to be there at 6 o'clock tonight, and we'll look forward to a great time together. Well, we're going to do some shout-outs, and then we'll give you an announcement. We'll do a quick lesson today, and then we'll pick up from there tonight in the service. And I know we're having just a few little issues on our side. I hope that uh, everything keeps moving on. And But let me just go ahead, first of all, and say some howdies real quick, and then we'll uh, get right into the lesson today. Jennifer Burton is aboard. Jennifer, great to have you again uh, on, on board today. We're so glad you're watching. Uh, Lauren Seats is watching. Lauren, great to have you aboard. Thanks for tuning in today. Karen Hoffman. Hello, Karen. Good to have you watching Countdown today. We appreciate you. Uh, it's great to have the Gillies aboard. Donnie and Tamara, appreciate these folks in a big way. Uh, Nellie Daniels. And so Jimmy and Nellie, God bless y'all. Good to see y'all aboard today. Uh, let's see. Gaynell Fritz is watching. Gaynell, great to have you aboard today i think at least on my end first time watcher you could have watched before maybe i missed you but good to have you aboard today uh charles campbell hello charles great to have you buddy hope you're having a good wednesday uh let's see nina hill hello miss nina hope you and brother mike are having a fine day good to see you on countdown uh phyllis hudson's aboard phyllis god bless you and, and jackie and i hope you're having a good week so far let me see here. Uh, Christine Edwards. Hello, Miss Christine. Good to see you. Hope you and Gary are having a blessed day today. Good to see y'all. Brother Mike Hill is aboard. Mike, God bless you, buddy. Good to see you watching. Looking forward to seeing many of you folks tonight. Uh, Patsy Bird. Hello, Miss Patsy. Uh, hope you and Ronnie are doing well. Pray for you often. Good to see you watching from Harmony. Uh, Carol Banks is watching. Carol, God bless you. Good to see you today. Thanks for tuning in. That's a few, and there may be others that may tune in in the course of the broadcast today. Others will catch this later on. My wife is uh, waving in the door here, and uh, and so I didn't see her. I didn't see her on here, so I think she's she's probably watching a soap opera or something instead. So uh, anyway, but we're glad to have my wife, my little redhead, aboard today as well. <laughs> Oh, if you could see what happens behind the behind the set, behind the scenes here, that would be great. Well, I'm glad we can have a great time. I tell you what, that's really that's what this is all about. We do this to try to encourage. You. And sometimes, you know what? It's just good to have. It's just good to laugh. Amen. God has given us a sense of humor, and it's important that we use it for the right kind of things. And so, Amen. God bless you. We're glad to have you aboard today. Let me go ahead and see if I can go to the split screen today. And I want to make an announcement. Of course, the Moss Chapel prayer meeting will be taking place tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. Now, again, I can't say enough about this. I hope that many of you will come out. Uh, we're hoping all of our Calvary crowd comes out. But we're hoping that other people from other congregations, other churches, will come out and support this great meeting and uh, you say, uh, Pastor, what is the, you know, what's the hype? I mean, what's it all about? Well, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, we need God to avail in this day in which we're living. And so God said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said he would hear from heaven, forgive our sin, heal our land. We need forgiveness and we need healing right now in America. I don't think anybody would debate that. And the way we do that is not by, you know, pretty little programs and and uh, I'm not against those kind of things. It's not, a, not necessarily social activism or community activism. I'm not against those things, but I'm just telling you that God's people need to pray. And that's what tomorrow night is all about. And so six o'clock 
345 Mosswood Road, uh, right off of Jennings Road, and uh, 345 Mosswood Road, 6 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We're going to meet together as the family of God, regardless of what church you come from or congregation you come from. Uh, this is not necessarily, uh, li- uh, this is not something just specifically for Calvary Baptist Church. And so I hope that many of you will come and we'll be looking forward to a great move of the Lord. Six o'clock Mosswood uh, Chapel prayer meeting. Looking forward to a great move of the Lord. Well, let's go ahead and get right into our lesson today. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to grab your Bibles with me. And we want to read once again, we want to read a few verses. Now we're going to work our way through, Lord willing, the book of Timothy. But I'm, I'm going to be honest, we're going to go back and read a few verses that we read yesterday simply because uh, God has sort of directed us there again. So let's go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1. And uh, verse number one, I've got my beautiful, beautiful Thomas Nelson, uh, King James Version Bible. Love this cover. Man, it's wonderful. Whatever Bible you have, get your Bible handy. And uh, 1 Timothy 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle. We talked about that yesterday. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Unto Timothy, mine own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Now that's a key verse today, and we're going to go back there in just a moment. The Bible says, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned from which some having swerved Having uh, have turned aside into vain jangling. Notice verse 7. The Bible says, desiring to be teachers of the law. And then it says, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. You know what? They want to be teachers, but they don't have a clue of what they're talking about. That's really what the Word of God is, is talking about there. And so we have learned, uh, we started this yesterday, And of course, yesterday we learned this. We learned of apostolic importance. We talked about the qualifications of an apostle. Now, if you didn't get a chance to watch the broadcast or listen to this study, I hope you'll go back and watch yesterday's broadcast as we talked about the biblical qualifications of an apostle. Uh, There are no more apostles in this day and time in which we live. And uh, there were definite qualifications. Anyway, uh, that was yesterday. And so go back and look at that if you didn't get a chance to watch. But how about this? Number next today is this. We learn not only of the apostolic importance, but we learn of things that should be avoided. We learn of things that should be avoided. Now, uh, you say, Pastor, is this important? And I'm going to say it is so important because some of the things that the Apostle Paul addresses here in 1 Timothy chapter 1 are the very things that are absolutely killing our churches today. And and you know what I'm talking about. So many, maybe not yours, but so many churches are dead beyond measure, just dead. And the life is dead and singing is dead. Uh, and so the things that he mentions here in 1 Timothy chapter 1 are things that are, that are hurting churches. And specifically, it's this. It's people teaching things and talking about things that have absolutely no importance. You know what? It's, it's, it's crazy. We're preaching things from the pulpit, teaching things in our Sunday school classes that, as my dad used to say, don't amount to a, a hill of beans. I mean, uh, things that are, uh, you know, just social things and, and, uh, uh, and community things and, and, you know what, and things that people have just sort of made up uh, and they, they're teaching on these things, and it's causing major problems in our churches. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about specifically. I've got this on your screen, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses, th- verses 3 through 7. Now, look there again, and Paul says this, And as I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some, notice this, that they teach no other doctrine. So, So he says this, that I don't want you to teach any other doctrine. I I don't want you to migrate away from the gospel message. That's what he's talking about. That those teachings that the apostles 
handed down to the early church. Paul said to young Timothy, who would be pastoring or maybe was pastoring a church in Ephesus, and he says to Timothy, Timothy, make sure you stick with the gospel. Make sure that you stay with those things that the apostles have faithfully handed down and don't migrate away from that message. That's what he's saying. Now notice what he says again. Uh, uh, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Look at verse four. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. Notice what happens. Which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. And so he says that there are some things that are being taught in the church. And basically what Paul was saying was this, that don't matter to hill of beans. I mean, they're not going to help anybody. They're not going to edify anybody, which is really what the church is all about. We're there to worship the Lord, to glorify Christ. But we're there for edification. We're there to uh, the, the purpose of the church, the purpose of the music is not to show someone's talent off. The purpose of the preaching is not to show the, the homiletical skill of the pastor or an evangelist. No, sir. Everything that we do in the church is set forth that it might edify the church, that it might build up. That's what that word means, that it might build people up in the faith. But yet we have migrated away from those, those edifying messages, and now we're teaching things that are not edifying at all. Teaching things that are just, uh, just to be uh, putting it quite honestly, are silly. And things that don't matter, they just don't matter at all. Now, specifically, you say, Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, he tells us right here. First of all, he says this, I want you to avoid fables. I want you to, <clears throat> to avoid fables. <clears throat> now, what's a fable? At least what was Paul talking about here when he was referencing <clears throat> Timothy. Well, basically the word fable there means legends about the origin and propagation of angels. And so they were talking about things that were tradition, things that were folklore, things that were old, uh, we, we would call it old wives fables uh, that had been passed down about angels uh, and, uh, and legends. And these things have made their way into the house of God and teachers and preachers we're beginning to teach on these fables, on these things that had to do with angels and old wives' fables. And the apostle Paul comes up and, the, and Paul says, man, don't migrate away from the, from the true message and the message that's going to serve as edifying. Again, angels, the propagation. That's interesting, isn't it? The propagation of angels. Let me give you a classic example. We won't do it today, but if you, could, if you would go in your Bibles back to Genesis chapter 6, Interesting story back in Noah's day. The Bible says the sons of God saw the daughters of men and came in unto them. Now, some people believe that that's talking about angels and that angels actually left their first, first estate. They left their uh, immortality, if you will, and they came into mortals, uh, into the daughters of men, earthlings, uh, earth women, and, and actually uh, were joined to them in a physical sense and, uh, and bore offspring. And the Bible talks about in those days, there were giants in those days. Now, there are some scholars, and I'll be honest with you, some well-known scholars that believe that that's speaking of angels, that angels uh, came in to, to uh, human women. And uh, because of that, they bore giants in the earth in those days. There are others who believe that that's simply talking about the bloodline of Seth, Adam's son, and uh, now here's the thing. We're not really sure about that. And so my point is this. You know what? What good does it do to, to be dogmatic about those things and to teach those things when really, honestly, it has nothing to do with salvation. It's not going to help your marriage. It's not going to help your family. It's not going to help your kids stay on the right course. Uh, and yet we have churches that are, that are centering on those kind of things. Let me give you another classic example. Dinosaurs. You know, some people believe there were dinosaurs. Others believe there were not dinosaurs. If there were dinosaurs, when did they exit the earth and all those kind of things? I have my own beliefs about that. We've been, my wife and I, we've been in some services where that was going to be the topic of the, of the sermon. <clears throat> now, again, I, I'm, I'm just saying this. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure that a T-Rex is going to help your marriage. And I don't know that, 
that a brontosaurus is, is, is going to help you in raising your kids. You see where I'm going with that? And so the apostle Paul comes up and Paul says, there are some things that need to be avoided in the church. And one of those is we need to avoid fables. We need to avoid legends uh, and uh, about the origin, propagation of angels. But number two, well, we could get bogged down here. Number two is this. He said, avoid endless genealogies. Avoid endless genealogies. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means... Uh, it means spiritual genealogies, angels and spirits. Now, it's not just talking about physical genealogies, which was very important to the Jewish people back in that day and time. But this is talking about, this goes further than that. It's talking about spiritual genealogies. And specifically, here again, it's that idea of spirits and angels. It would be like, it would be like in our day, it would be like talking about uh, Greek mythology. And and again, those things had made their way into the church and they had begun to talk about these kind of things. And Paul said, these are not things that are edifying the body of Christ. Now, as I studied this a little further, I found out that basically what's going on there is this. It's the idea that there were teachers in the church and they were trying to get so deep in their teaching that the gospel was no longer deep enough. And you know what, my dear friend, we are there today. So many churches are so afraid, and so many preachers are so afraid that they're going to be accused of being shallow, that they go so deep in their preaching and so deep in their teaching and their theology that their people sit out in the audience, and after the service they say, wow, our minister really brought a great sermon But if you were to go to them and say, did it speak to your heart? They would have to say no. You know what, boy, I I really realized that our pastor, Dr. Bottlestopper, I mean, he is, man, he is quite the scholar. Did it change your life? No. Did it help you with your raising your kids? No. Did it, uh, did it help you strengthen your marriage? No. Now I, then I want to ask a question. What good is it? You know what, if all you did was learn some intellectual knowledge or you learned how smart your pastor was, what good is it? And uh, you know what I believe? I believe it's time that we just get back to simple preaching and simple teaching again. You go back and look at men like evangelist Billy Sunday. And God used the evangelist Billy Sunday. They tell us that over one million souls walked down and were saved under Billy Sunday's ministry. And one of the reasons that Billy Sunday was so incredibly popular back in his day is because Billy Sunday just preached in, in everyday language, in the street language of the, of the people. And people would flock to go hear this great evangelist because when he preached, it spoke to them. They knew what he was talking about. They didn't have to decipher. You know, they didn't need, they didn't need a translator to know what this preacher was saying. They understood what this man of God was talking about. I'm going to put a reference on the top of your screen there, Isaiah 28 and verse 9, verses 9 through 14 Isaiah, the prophet, was criticized without mercy. And one of the reasons that he was so criticized is because Isaiah's message was so simple. In fact, I want to read that for you. Uh, Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. This is what they said about the prophet. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. In other words, In other words, what they were saying was this, Isaiah's message is just good for kids. It's just good for children because it's so simple. He is so simplistic in his prophecy and his teaching. And so they criticized this great prophet and said, well, you know what, here here he comes on the scene. His, His teaching is so simple. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, and there a little. Now, I won't read the rest of that passage, but, but here's my point. That simple preaching hit its mark. And because it hit its mark, it brought conviction. And you know what? That conviction didn't sit well with people. And so because of that, they criticized the man of God. Now, again, we're done today. But I, I want to encourage us by saying this. Let's get away from teaching and preaching all those things that aren't going to help anybody. You say, Pastor, what kind of preaching do you have at Calvary Baptist Church? Deep, shallow? Uh, I, 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 let me use this story. Years ago before I went into the ministry, I was getting ready to go to Bible college. 
had a supervisor that asked me this. He said, he said, uh, Stephen, what kind of preacher are you going to be? Are you going to be the kind of preacher that tells people what they want to hear? Or are you going to be the kind of preacher that tells people what they don't want to hear? And I guess the Lord just gave me this because I said to him, I want to be the kind of preacher that tells people what they need to hear. And so let's get back to simple preaching. Preaching that helps marriages, preaching that helps families, preaching that strengthens homes, preaching that, that keeps our teenagers from making terrible mistakes in their life, preaching that talks about holiness and morality and worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. By the way, in case you're wondering, it's the kind of preaching God willing we'll be having tonight at 7 o'clock at Calvary Baptist Church. And I want to encourage you, if you don't have a place to be, I hope you'll be with us. Well, listen, that's a simple word, and Lord willing, we'll pick up from there tomorrow at 3 o'clock. And uh, if you have never given your heart to Christ, I hope you'll do so today. If you don't know how, you reach out to us. We'll be glad to spend some time talking to you. And uh, don't forget, be kind to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. We love you. Have a great rest of the day.